I'm inside of Adobe Illustrator, and what I want to do is walk you through how to create a patterned tile pattern. Um, in Midjourney, you can type in a parameter and basically set up uh, a look and feel. For instance, mid 1800s woodblock print of scrolling filigree vines and leaves in black ink on white, flat art vectorized, and then just add the dash dash tile to create a repeating tile pattern. Now, that's one really effective format for creating some fast designs, but I'm gonna show you another thing that's available inside of Adobe Illustrator. Uh, so here we go, tile two, I'm creating my preset detail. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a 1024 by 1024 uh, file size. Everything else that you see on the screen here is fine, RGB screen 72 DPI and create. Again, this is gonna be a vector file, so it really doesn't matter what I do in this space uh, because it can be scaled up to any size I want. So I'm gonna start by clicking over here and just changing things around just a little bit. I don't need an outline. I want it to be black, and I'm just simply gonna click on the screen. My rectangle size, I want it to be 1024 by 1024, and apply OK. There we go. Here's where we're gonna get started. First is I wanna make sure that this square is set in the top left corner. So this little tool up here, if you're not familiar with the properties tool inside of Adobe Illustrator, when that's clicked, you get this bar right here. And so you'll see my width is 1024, height is 1024, great. But I wanna make sure my X and Y coordinates are set to zero and zero. All right, subtle, but this is important. Next is I want to begin working with this particular file. Okay, so inside of Illustrator now, we have the generative tool, okay? And it's telling me generate beta. Now, inside of this, uh, I want to describe the thing I'm looking to create. Uh, so actually, this is available either through the generative beta toolbar or underneath your properties. Underneath your properties, we can choose what we're trying to create. This gives us a little more easy detail access. So instead of subject, I want to choose pattern. And you can see the, pop, the prompt that I just described at the beginning, a mid 1800s woodblock print of scrolling filigree vines and leaves in black ink on white, flat art vectorized. It's already there, okay? Now, because the square is drawn and selected, I can choose generate beta, and it will actually begin creating three different renders for me to consider uh, for my artboard style render. Give it just a second. I'm gonna do this in real time so you're seeing it at the same speed I am. And you can actually begin to see over here under variations, uh, they are being created. Okay, I'm beginning to see leaves take shape in this third image. The styling I've seen in some of these, um, it varies drastically. Some kind of have a more playful, whimsical look and like this first one. Uh, the second one, and the first two really aren't what I'm looking for, the third. Consistently, for some reason, the third tends to be more in line with the, the style that I'm going after. Uh, so I like what it's created here. This one works fine, okay? So I don't have a problem with this one. I'm pretty satisfied with this. Um, so what can we do with this? Well, right now, nothing, <laughs> because it's set as a pattern uh, that's been added to our uh, swatches, okay? So you can see there's the three patterns that were just created, but we're not stuck with this. We do not have to stay with this being a finished thing. We can actually edit this particular file. So how do we do that? So what we want to do is double click on the pattern inside of our swatches panel. And what it'll do is pull up our swatch inside of a vector file. Uh, so this is where we can actually begin editing this particular file. And you'll see it's giving us the repeating pattern in the background and there is a zoomed in area. And this is the base of our pattern. So I'm actually gonna zoom in on this space so we can see the file that we're working with. Okay, 
Now, here's the tricky thing. I can manually go in and try to individually select these things, and you'll note rather quickly that getting all of the right things selected is going to be challenging. There's a way to work around that, and this is the beauty of Adobe Illustrator, is I can go under, oh, I just clicked out of it. I can go under Select and do same fill color. Now, I don't have anything selected, so nothing's gonna be selected, but watch this. If I choose one of the shapes that's already the color I'm looking for, I can now go select, same, fill color, and all of the things that are that color are selected. So instead of black, maybe I want it to be more of this color here that's more of a 20% gray. Fantastic, this is really good. Okay. Now, what you'll see is there's a couple things in here that did not get selected, like this one here. So maybe it's a slightly different color. That's okay. I can go select, same, fill color. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab these other little things over here and make sure select, same fill color. Sometimes things just don't want to cooperate, and that's okay. I can go in and just manually select these last few things and apply this color that I've applied on the others. Okay. Now, what about this background? Okay, I maybe I want it to be pure white. So in that case, the same thing is I'll select the background color, select, same, fill color, it gets me all of these things and I will go to white. Now you'll notice that these things extend outside of the square and wherever it extends, that is not selected inside of the square because it goes outside. So it's because the repeating patterns are extending beyond uh, that repeating pattern. This piece right here is an extension of these pieces up here. Um, so that's the reason that's happening. So I can, even if I select, I can select these things, but you'll notice anything I'd want to go outside of the box, they're not selectable. Uh, so just kind of good to note. Okay, so we've got our basic design done. I can do save a copy and filigree two. All right, so that's been added to my swatches and I can say, done. That's it. Nice and simple. I now have a pattern that I can apply inside of Adobe Illustrator um, that was rather easy to create. And this is pretty cool. So anyway, I just wanted to show you a quick walkthrough on how to create a pattern inside of Adobe Illustrator, how to make a basic edit to it. And now it's a workable file that I can use on other things. So in the packaging that we're going to be doing with the soap, here we go, this is a great asset for that. Okay, I wanna walk you through how we can go from mid-journey through Illustrator to create a repeating pattern. Um, I've already started this process and I wanna walk you through it. So the first thing is you'll see that I've created this prompt, mid 1800s woodblock print of a scrolling filigree, vines and leaves in black ink on white, flat art vectorized and the double hyphen tile created this series of patterns. Okay, so this is great, I like it. When I'm looking at all of these, the one that kind of appeals to me is this one on the top right. Um, I like the way there's a little more white and it's broken up a little bit. I do like the fine lines that are happening in the first image as well. So this is kind of a, a toss up here into which direction I wanna take it. Um, I think I'm gonna go with number one. So I've already upscaled number two as well, and since I already have that one, um, here we go. Now we can see between these two, there's this one. I love the amount of white space that's in this, and I like the details of the leaves and such. And then I can look at this one. I do like the leaf pattern that I'm seeing here, these little clusters of almost like palm, pomade style things, and these little things that are happening here. 
I guess I got to choose one. So I'm going to go with this guy. And so I'm going to save image. And we'll put it under package. MJ tile. Save. Okay. So we're going to close out Discord for just a minute and get away from Midjourney. And I want to take this file and bring it into Illustrator. So Illustrator is already open. And what I want to do in here is I'm going to bring in um, our presentation here, our, our graphic into this space. Now I've already created a space that's 1024 by 1024. It's just waiting for the file to be dropped in. So I'm going to go ahead and file and place. And the file I created was called MJ tile. And so there we go. I'm going to grab that, drop this in, and go as close to the top left corner as I possibly can. The file's already 1024, so it works out perfect. Under properties. Now, inside of Illustrator, I tend to keep properties and layers open just about the whole time. Uh, the reason is because this is where most of my work is going to be creating. Uh, so layers is similar to Photoshop if you're not familiar with Illustrator. Um, and then properties allows me to have the overall details of what's happening. This file is already 1024 by 1024. I want to go ahead and make sure the top left corner selected is my reference point. So that's where I dropped it from. And I want to set it to zero, let's see, zero and zero. Okay, this is really key because it's working within the box. Okay, next, what I want to do is I want to vectorize this image. As a vector image, uh, this is more for production quality of things. I could do a mock-up and leave it like this and it's fine, but I want to be able to adjust the colors and kind of play with it and do more things with it. So what I want to do from there is with this image selected, I'm going to choose image trace. Now you'll see it's both in this bar here as well as in the main bar at the top. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where I do it from. I can just choose image trace and it starts the process. Okay, to the left of tracing results where it says view tracing results is a little box called the image trace panel. I wanna select that. And with this selected, it's given me some options of what I can choose from. Um, model black and white is fantastic. Uh, the tracing result is what I want to be seeing. And then under here are some different options as far as how to fine tune what we've got. So the threshold is less or more. And what this does is it adjusts how well it stayed true to the original image. So if I move to the right, you can see that it gets a little darker. And as I move to the left, it becomes more white and light and we start losing some of the detail. So typically it's almost in the middle uh, or just a little right of middle uh, when you first pull this in. So what I'm looking for is I don't mind that these are disconnected. I think that's fine and it's okay that it's not perfect because I'm going to end up scaling this down and working from things. So you know, I'll just kind of get a place where I'm satisfied with what it's creating. And you'll see also there are corners that are available in here where we can adjust how fine tuned the corners are. So if you have less corners, you're going to have less structured detail. As you get more corners, that means more points that are creating the shapes and things that are there. Uh, we will get more detail, but also we're increasing a little bit the file size that might be there. Um, leave it at 80. And then noise, of course, is the little minuscule detail that otherwise might get missed. Uh, by increasing the noise, uh, we'll get more of the detail as I reduce it. Um, it begins to kind of let some of those things slide. And so for what we're trying to do here, just a little bit of noise is fine. And often what I'll do is simplify pass and output. Now, you'll see some minor changes that will take place with that. You do not have to include it because what it'll tend to do sometimes is it'll create some sharp edges uh, that you might not be after. So we can turn that off if we like. It's whichever way you want to go with it. Again, these are all things that you can adjust to figure out which direction you want to take things. So I'm going to leave it just as it is and it's black and white. 
I've made my threshold settings, my advanced settings. All this is great. I've made sure that stroke is turned off because I only want the fills and we're done. Now, it's done, but it can still be manipulated. So the way I wanna work with this is I'm gonna click up here on expand. What expand does is it basically selects everything that's going on here and it basically converts it to a finished vector file. Okay, so that means this thing's ready to go. Now, everything is selected, which means also the white. I'll show you that if I click on that white section and let's see, no color, but I'm gonna choose the fill. And if I choose a color, you'll see that the white area is still a selection inside of here. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a selection of everything that is currently black. So I'll do that by making an initial selection of anything in the, the project that is black. And if I go under select, I can choose same and fill color. What that does then is everything else on this page that is the same fill color is now selected. So this is a way to make sure that everything's gonna be the same. So I've got that selected and I could go ahead and do object group that keeps it all contained. And I'm gonna take it to a lighter color. So well, in this case, we'll make it this kind of French gray. And because I told it to select the same color, it's not selecting white. So you'll notice that white is still there. So I can actually go through and select individually the white and you can see that it still exists. Okay, so what now? Well, here's something else that's kind of cool. I can select this particular thing and let me show you something that's kind of cool here. waiting on it. I've got multiple applications all at the same time. Okay, if you never can remember this, because I never can remember the shortcut, choose, go under help and type in pattern. And underneath pattern, you'll see pattern make. Now this is underneath the object panel. And so object, pattern, make. What just happened then is the file that I had inside the box created has now been turned into a pattern, a reproducible pattern. Uh, and I, it's actually been added to my swatches panel. Okay, now it's only on this page, but that pattern is available and I can work from it. And I can do save a copy. I'm gonna call it filigree one it's been added to the swatches panel and I'll say done okay so this is actually kind of cool I can go back in here and double click on that pattern and I can make edits to it so easily let me show you I could easily now if I wanted to select an individual element and change its color and as I do it immediately applies it applies it to the page so for instance Say I like this, uh, but I want it to be this color green. Well, look what happens. The pattern, the repeating pattern shows up with that filigree pattern. So this is a cool way that you can play with creating patterns, working from uh, mid journey first, bringing it into Illustrator, vectorizing it, turning it into a pattern. And now I've got something I can work with and do multiple things with. So this is just a cool little feature that's available uh, utilizing the tools of generative AI as well as Adobe Illustrator. Hey, this is Brian Sykes with AI Explore. Uh, I'm glad you joined me for this little intro into generative AI with Adobe Illustrator mid-journey, creating that tile repeating pattern. Um, don't stop here. What are you going to create? Figure out a solution that you can use this for and then actually go do something with it. Uh, love to see what you create. So find me on LinkedIn, find me on Instagram and share what you put together. Love to see it. Till next time, see you guys.